So today is a very exciting day for me and the van because we're making a trip up to Maruchador to hand this thing over to Accelerate Auto Electrics and Air Conditioning. Now they do a hell of a lot of vans and they're going to work on ours for us doing a full off-grid lithium setup in it and mate to say that I'm excited is an understatement that's pretty much what I've from day one I said I want a van that's fully off-grid and you know self-sufficient so that's what we're going to do I will probably introduce you to Andrew at some stage he's He's the main man down there, so um, he's going to make all the dreams come true. Just doing a quick check around because I'm about to hook this thing on and make the trek up there. So yeah, for those wondering, I don't know how good you can see it, but I will put the link in the description. But this is them. Um, phone numbers there. Yeah, you can look them up on YouTube as well. They, um, they've done snowies before, they've done a lot of caravans, and the work looks unreal, so I can't wait. See you up there. Hi, I'm Andrew here from Accelerate. We've just completed the 400 um, lithium conversion on the Snow River, and I'm just about to do a run through on everything we've done. Um, this could take a while, but anyway, let's do it. All right, so we'll start off down here. Um, so we got, what, what we've done, so this is a 400 amp lithium system, um, so it's got two 200s, we've got four solar panels on the roof, so, and they're 180s, so we've got 720 watts of solar on the roof. We've got them running into a Morningstar TriStar 60 amp solar regulator. We've also got a Enerdrive 60 amp 240 volt charger. We've got an Enerdrive 2600 watt inverter, and we will show a lot on that, um, of what it does. And then there will be, tucked away down here, a Enerdrive 40 amp DC-DC charger. Alright, so that's the main stuff. So basically we'll go through the batteries first. Two 200 amp batteries, five year warranties through Enerdrive. They're a full Bluetooth battery, um, automatic, so their own jump start feature in them. Um, they weigh 25 kilos each. And yeah, so basically how they work is we've got both of them charging in parallel. You'll notice we've put the, picked up the negative off this one and the positive off this one, so they're balanced. We've got them charged at 100%, I think 90% now. Um, and basically, the main thing to look at, there's a couple of things to look out for with these batteries. Look at my phone. Um, the first one, so each one of them has got its own Bluetooth app in it, and we want to always confirm, I'll do this while we're talking, yep. that they're within a few percentage of each other. So, we have, so Snowy River 1, so there's a lot of batteries listed on my app, and I'll, once we put the video down, I'll show you. So basically this one's currently, it's charging at 4.2 amps, and we're just in the sun, and it's at 95%. So if I then, so the next screen is basically the same information with a temperature rating. Um, and that's and probably the next screen is if there's ever a fault in the battery it'll show up on that screen red is bad green is good obviously we're all green and um, and that's about it on this batteries um, so what will and zero battery cycles yeah um, with the four panels on the roof full sun in summer you'd, you'd be expecting nearly 40 amps um, this time in winter probably 30 mm -hmm. it's more it really does make a big difference um, the different times of the year so you won't now, unfortunately, now that it's in May, you won't really see what your solar can do till about yeah. October, November. Um, but yeah, it'll 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 get a little bit worse in June, July, and then the line will get better from there. Battery's taken care of. But next thing is easy is the AC charger. Um, so it just sits there absolutely dormant like that and does absolutely nothing until we plug it into 240 on the outside. Yep. Um, and then it'll just spring to life. We've um, added this GPO down here. Yep. So. Every other GPO in the caravan will get power when you turn the inverter on, except for this one. Yep. This one only gets power when we plug in externally 
So this, the, the only reason you'd plug something in here would be if you wanted to, um, it only to charge when it's plugged in the power. Yeah. Know, what, what you'd use that for, maybe like a jump start or something like that, one of those lifting things or something. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, as soon as you plug in the 240 volts, the screen will turn blue and it'll just count up to the 60 amps. Uh, and that's really it, and it'll just keep going until the batteries are full, and then it'll sort of s go into sleep mode. Yeah, definitely, um, it looks like a big unit. <laughs> yeah, they are, yeah. they are large. Um, we, you, you can get away with 40, but to be honest, they don't cost, cost us much more for the 60s. So, yeah. So they work out really well. Um, the maths on these batteries really is as simple as if you're, um, you know, if you... If, at a 60 amp charger, if you're fully discharged, then sort of um, six volts, twenty like sort of five, six hours kind of thing. So if you've taken out 60 amps, you put 60 amps back in. Yeah. Again, um, with your solar running at say 30 amps, then um, that pretty much will give you half the output of that. But um, you yep. find this is a good system. Um, DC DC charger. Move on to it. Yep. It again sits there dormant, does nothing unless you plug your car in, which we'll do before you leave, um, or plug a solar panel into the external solar plug. Anderson plug we fitted on the side. Um, basically, it's they they are slow. Is probably the main thing with them. Once you plug in your car, it will take up to about two minutes for it to count up to the 40 amps. Mm -hmm. So um, when you plug it in, it should light up, but don't freak out in the first 30 seconds that it's only showing 4 or 5 amps, they just, it's a thing with them, they, yep. they do take a while to count up, um, so they're fine to do that, but it, it, yeah, give it a, do a walk around the van before you come and look at it, because I get that one a lot where people ring me in by the time they've sort of finished the conversation, that's doing what Yeah, well do. it kind of gives the car enough time to, yeah. to get up there as well, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think voltage drop, the distance, probably also your alternator's got to recover from the start, on yep. the start battery. Um, obviously most of the vehicles we get in here have got other stuff like um, you know, dual battery systems and things going on so there's a lot of load on the alternator um, and the same goes with the um, external solar panel plug that in and it will just gradually trickle up yep. and depending on whatever your folding panel we put out will be so the next thing really is the solar rig um, so the solar rig does just sits there it's got three lights on it like traffic lights at the moment you'll see it's an orangey green and the reason why it's orangey green means it, it basically they show state of charge. So orangey green means all, almost fully charged. Red just means it's in bulk mode and it's working hard. So if the batteries are down around 80% or something, it'll show red. Yep. Solid red is fine. Um, flashing is emitting a code. Just red is fine. People see a red light, get worried. Um, it'll just count up red, orange, green. One thing that we have noticed a lot is when it's charging on 240, it tend because the voltage goes high in the system, it tends to shut down those solar rigs, um, and so it'll show green. So if you have a batteries at twenty percent, if you look at it this hard, yep. you got your two forty charger plugged in at short power, and you notice your solar's gone green and it's not doing anything. They do do that because they see the voltage go high. Yep. The minute you turn this down, you'll find your solar will kick back in. So it's a bit one or the other. Um, it's just a thing with it, unfortunately, but 16 amp charger will not cover these batteries so quickly. Alright, now for the final one is the inverter. So the inverter is what makes 240 volts out of these batteries. So the inverter, we've got big heavy leads running here, and um, it feeds power, takes power from the batteries and feeds it out through these two leads. So the inner drive inverter is what's called transfer inverter. So basically that means we've got power coming from the outside of the van to this GPO for the battery charger and then into the um, inverter, out of the inverter, inverter and off to everything in the van. When you plug in the GPO, like plug in the external to shore power, it basically just does what's called transferring and it just joins the two leads. Um, and what that does is then means all the loads in your van, like your air conditioning and everything, is coming from the caravan park or, or your house, and the batteries are getting charged as well. So in that state, you're actually not using any power from your batteries. Van, it'll automatically, it's, it's absolutely seamless, you won't even notice, um, transfer over and it will just instantly start drawing power from these batteries. And then, um, yeah, it's, it's, so the batteries will start depleting and this will shut down as well. So, it's got an RCD on the front of it, it's quite easy to bump, so if you've got no 240 volts, 
it can be this RCD or the factory one that was in the van. Now, both of them are in series, so either of them could be tripped. So if you've got no 240, you've got to check both of them. Um, it also, oh sorry, we'll put out power here. The other thing it's got is over this side. It's hard to see, but it's very easy to feel mm -hmm. down there. It's got an overload switch. So that's set at 16 amps in 240. So obviously you've got a 15 amp outlet on the outside. Um, and a, the RCD in any pole or your house will be a maximum of 15 amps. Yep. That's just designed to stop any more than sort of 16 amps getting pulled through the inverter and overheating the inverter. I've only ever had one customer able to trip it and he was out of control. He was running like he had his roof air con, he had one of the stand up air cons in his annex, he had an inductive cooktop and something else all going <laughs> at once and he rang me freaking out. Yeah. And we worked out it was that. So I've never seen anybody else trip it. But it's actually a really good thing because it puts sort of a safety breaker in the van and stops so that if there is something wrong with the R C D outside it sort of slows down the line going yeah. through and gives the van some sort of protection. Um, these leads are designed to unplug and they'll actually plug together. Now, the oh, reason yeah. for yep. that is if you're, say, ever in a caravan, and this is probably the main one, you know, you're somewhere and your RCD starts tripping, rather either this one or that one, so there's some sort of dead short in, short in the van uh, or something going to ground, you can just plug them together and basically the van is wired the same as the way it was originally. Yep. So that way you can call out any electrician and just say to him, treat it like a van, because obviously most electricians don't understand this, and the minute they see this and there's a short, they blame this. Mm -hmm. um, so that way you can just bypass that and they can treat it just like a normal caravan. Yep. So um, I've had so many phone calls where a man's tripping RCD, water, bloody inverter, and I say bypass it, and they go, it's still tripping, and I go... <laughs> well, it's not that, from that point, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they've found, you know, air conditioning's been hit by a branch, or their water heater's leaked, or something yeah. internally, or something like that. Yeah. Um, but that's just a really good thing if you're ever out in the middle of nowhere and you need to call out an electrician, just a normal one for the 240, you can do that and yep. then you can treat it like a normal van. Because um, we, we do see problems with 240 in caravans normally after rain events, like we just have this one most of them pop up. Um, the only other thing in here is um, we've got the shunt for the EPRO. Yep. So this thing down here, green light means it's got power going to it all the earth goes through this so all the earth power so literally everything goes to one side and the other side goes off to the batteries and that's measuring the current flow on the gauge that i'll show you upstairs and then the final thing this is the fuse box and we've just left those two loose for you yep. so that's the way if you wanted to add anything that way you don't have to mess with my system yeah um and everything <laughs> all the power is taken from the correct spots yeah so you got two off there, you can, they, they easily can take up to 60 or 70 amps, whatever side, new fuse. Um, obviously for your diesel heater, you can go into there, you can go straight down or wherever you want to do to go yeah. over there. So that's, you give you them, so that way you can add whatever you want. Um, while we're on it, I know I said I was going to run something up there. but Yeah, I did I, notice it yeah, wasn't my, there. My guys are awesome, they found a way through the wall. Yeah. So the cables go up through the wall. Awesome. Um, that happens, I always tell the customer I'm going to do the worst solution and yeah. see if I can come up with a better solution. And then um, while we're on the inverter, so the inverter here, um, just hold down the power button for like two seconds, it'll beep. Then everything in the van will start to beep, that was your microwave and the little beep was your aircon. And basically now every power point is live. Um, so, oh no, you're right. That's hot water. Yep. So basically, I'll turn, that, turn it back off and we'll come back to that, but I did want to see that to test it before we came. Um, so on this inverter gauge, it, we'll get it running. We'll get the aircon running. We go. The noisy aircon. The noisy aircon. So on the inverter gauge, 13.3, that's our current battery voltage. Because we got lithium, so it'll stay at that. Orange means that we're using battery power. If we plugged it into shore power, that'd be green. Yep. So that's a way of knowing I'm not fudging my um, video and this is coming off the batteries. Um, if you hit the select button once, that actually gives us wattage being used. So at the moment we're using 1,050 watts. Um, and then you can just 
press that to return back. All those other things are settings, don't mess with them, but they're very hard to mess with. Yeah. And then the final, and that's basically to shut, the, shut it down, you just hold it down for three seconds. I'll leave it going so we can show you this. This is the Enerdrive E Pro. It's telling us our batteries are at 96%, which we saw on the app as well. So that's good news. Everything's um, set up correctly. And then if you just hit the button to the right, is generally what I recommend. At the moment, we're using 60 amps. Oh, look at that. So at the moment, if I turn on, there you go, we've just got some sun. So at the moment we're making positive 30 amps. Yeah. So before we had a negative. Yeah. So we're making 30 amps at the moment and it's not awesome. The sun's just coming out. Yeah, so it's not awesome. There we go, we can hit it again. Um, pretty funny that that's square on 30. Yeah. Who would have thought? That never happens. <laughs> Random. Um, yeah, that's about it, really. Um, the so you managed to fit four panels on the roof, yeah? Four panels on yeah. the roof, um, with no jigger, jiggling of anything, like the aerial or anything, it looks yeah. like the way it was. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so we've run all new cables out to the, the to the Anderson at the front, new cable into the roof, and um, four panels on the roof, that's pretty much it. Love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wake up! It's time to look at the enemy. Look in the mirror if he is no friend to me. It's not.